For the best prices and service on Pokemon TCG singles and products, check out ccgcastle.com and use promo code EVOLUTIONARIES-5 for 5% off your next order. What's up, guys? And here, coming at you from Daytona Regionals with a very special friend of mine. Jose Severino. And Jose here has been very kind and very generous to offer a deck profile for us today. And would you care to tell us what that deck is? It is Waylord Magikarp Stall. Okay, never mind. Video's over, guys. Go. You gotta go. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's actually a very innovative deck. Like, it's... You would think that it's autoplay, but it's really not. Like, there's a lot more depth into it than I actually thought because he was, like, explaining it to me. I even went a game against him, and there was actually a lot more he did than I thought just, like, than just draw a pass. Like, there's a lot more thought he put into it. And I'm happy to... Uh, I'm happy to have you here, Jose, at the show with me. Let me just go ahead and lower down the camera to the mat. And you may proceed when you're ready. Alrighty, so of course we start off with... I chose to go with three copies of Magikarp Warlord GX. And by the way, guys, just forgive the glare you see here. Since we are inside the venue, there is really nothing we can unfortunately do about it. We play this card simply because a massive 300 HP is extremely hard to one-hit KO. It's still possible, especially by things like Picaram, but it takes a lot of resources for them to do. Oh yeah, definitely. Like Even Grass decks can't always do the one-shot for that. Then we go off into Koopa with Scoundrel Guard to defend against those EXs and GXs. Ah, still so annoying to deal with. That scoundrel guard, man. It's too much, too and much. Basically, what you what you want to do is, depending on your matchup, you send this up, and then most likely they'll start setting up non uh, EX and GX attackers. So then, you simply switch back to Warlord, and oftentimes non uh, EX and GX Pokemon can't do 300 damage in one turn. All of that. Like, it's possible, but they have to commit so much to just knocking out one Pokemon. Then we have Sigil of GX. Oh, let me move that one a bit. Oh, here, do you mind if I hold this one like this? Because for some reason, this one specifically is like one of the worst. All right, so go ahead. And basically, we use that one for its ability. Whatever damage it takes by Pokemon EX and GX simply does it back to those Pokemon. Yeah, so if, if it gets like the Pikachu specifically, since it has a lightning weakness, it's bad yet kind of good at the same time. Uh, like, oh, I'm sorry, go on. Uh, th if they hit me and they hit me for KO, most often times the minimum they can do is 150. They do 150 to me with weakness. That's 300 damage. 300 damage also knocks out uh, Pikachu. I give up two prizes, but they give up three. Oh yeah. Then he. And then here we have Zergatree GX, simply for two reasons. Uh, flashing Head, which prevents uh, damage when special energy is attached to your opponent. And for Lightning GX. Just to be able to just make him have an additional prize. It's like, it wasn't enough to just stall and just keep making walls. You gotta give him an additional prize to take too. Easily making games turn to eight prizes. Yeah. I mean, put it this way. I could have a I could put two where I could put no, a nine prize game with three whale or GXs. Goodness. And then right here we have Girafferig with uh, from Lost Thunder that has so I'm play try zooming in a little bit. And we play it specifically for get lost. Put two cards from your opponent's discard pile into the Lost Zone. I was able to use this to get rid of supporters when people want to uh, continuously use Via Seeker. And I was able to use it in one game to take out specifically Archies and a Blastoise so that their entire strategy just doesn't exist anymore. It literally just went up in smoke or it drowned in the, in the depths of the ocean. That was terrible, I'm sorry. Then we play two copies of Team Flare Grunt just to discard energy. God, I remember going against Team Flare Grunt back in the day. I still have flashbacks about that. It's not pleasant. 
four copies of N, which is just a good shuffle draw. Why, thank you. <laughs> uh, and great, uh, a, a great, great disruption for your opponent, especially when they want to search out things and then hold on to them. Then, to speed things up, Team Rocket's handiwork, just discarding top of your opponent's deck. Yep, could discard at a maximum four. And then there's this new strategy with um, Lieutenant Surge coming out. That just, oh my goodness. Then Ace O'Rolla to pick up all that damage. We spend three, four turns putting damage onto Warlord, and it just goes straight back to my hand, and I just send another one up. Oh man. I'm kinda glad I've getting rotated out. <laughs> Uh, then two Guzma, just to stall out my opponent. Guzma's great. Then a a few one ups here. Team Flares, uh, Team Skull Grunt to discard energy from your opponent's hand, so that they can't hold on to it. Skyla just to search out any trainer from your deck. Gladian, just to maybe there are cards that you prized, and being a stall deck, you don't take any prizes. So being able to go in there and get something that you need really helpful. Oh, I agree with that 100. Ninja Boy, so that when your opponent ends up doing you know lots of damage uh, and somewhat consistently, and you just can't stop them, especially with those uh, GX Pokemon, simply Ninja Boy into a Hoopa stalls them for a few turns, or even vice versa. Put a Hoopa up, they start powering up non-GXs that really can't do that much damage. Ninja Boy into a Whale Lord. Mars is just... I debated playing Hal or, uh, or Tierno or Sharon just drawing three cards, but being a stall deck, why not just draw two cards, which is what, just one less, and then discard a card from my opponent's hand? And to me, that's still a move that sounds better than how. Lumeria, discard two cards, but I can discard any energy from my opponent's Pokemon anywhere on the field. Faulkner, which is used to get out a, most oftentimes, a Nest Ball, to get out Giraffe Rig or Zerka Tree and the lightning energy to attach to one of them. Yeah, and honestly, I just want to say that, like, until Pikaron was a thing, I never thought Volkner would see any play. Now it's like one of the most high-demand supporters right now. Then Pokemon Fan Club, I'll just... Get, up a little bit. Yeah. Pokemon Fan Club, just to switch out two of the Pokemon and put them into your hand. Then we play four Via Seeker, just to uh, play all the supporters that we have. Then we play four Crushing Hammer. Sorry about the glare. No, it's actually not that bad now. Um, four Crushing Hammer. It's just too good. Just discard this energy coin flip. Yeah, I'm sure you awesome guys out there can like, especially if you've been to regionals and try to film like, you know, like unfortunately, as I said before, this stuff is kind of out of our control, so. Uh, two Enhance Hammer. Especially for, well, almost every deck plays special energy. Even some Picarom I saw was playing, uh, is it? Flash energy. Flash energy? Yeah. Just to help out with the fighting matchups. Then we play three Nest Ball, just to search out Pokemon. And then we play two Counter Catcher. Just uh, if you're falling behind on prizes, or in my opinion, one of my best things to do is have Zerka Tree use uh, Flash... Uh, lightning, right? Lightning or, GX. Or yeah. Lighting. One of those two. Uh, lighting GX. Put one of your opponent's uh, cards from their hand into their prizes. Then most times they actually knock you out, but it puts you behind by one instead of two. And then you can start using Counter Catcher to stall them out. Then two copies of Field Ball, just to discard Tool, Stadiums, Garb, Garb. Uh, then 
four max potion because you can never do enough healing. Never enough. One copy of escape rope. Sometimes your opponent will only have one item, uh, one Pokemon on their bench that you want to bring out. And sometimes you need to be able to use a different supporter other than Guzma to do that. And so this one leaves it a little bit less out of your control, but most often times you could also it's just a good switch card. If I want to switch from Hoopa or anything that's heavily damaged that I can't heal at this moment and force them to have a Guzma. Or if you're lucky and they only have one thing on bench, then you control it. Uh, Parallel City. Limiting to three is just really good against Zoroark. And the minus 20 against the Lightning matchups actually matters. Because it can turn a two hit K a two hit KO to a three hit KO. Or most often times a three hit KO to a five hit KO. Oh man. Which at that point it's not even worth it. Not after all those resources you had to use. One battle compressor simply to give Via Seeker more viability. So I could discard some of those supporters that I don't need, or even discard Pokemon that I'm not going to use during the matchup. And if I am going to use them, but I could still discard them because I could have Rescue Stretcher here to simply just get them into my hand, or shuffle them back into the deck if I need to. Uh, red card. Just, it's uh, Marshadow, but I don't have to put anything on my bench. And it's only to my opponent. Very nice, very nice. Power pad to shuffle uh, those supporters back into my hand, or into into the deck. So it's almost a fifth VS Seeker. Basically. Uh, one Lightning for the Giraffe Rig and uh, Zerka Tree. And last but certainly not least, Captivating Pokeball. A lot of the time, your opponent will have a very big hand and they'll just keep drawing and passing because they have nothing. And then you force them to put down that Lele, that Shaman, uh, that Execute that they weren't going to put down, that they were just going to hold on to until they have all the right parts. But you force them to put it down and gain none of the benefits. And most often, uh, one game, I even put down a... Uh, had them put down Execute and a Tapu Lele, and I uh, Guzma up the Execute. They couldn't do anything for like five turns. They finally were able to get Float Stone, but they used their Float Stones on other stuff as well. So when they try to shut off abilities for Hoopa, they had to use a Choice Band on their Garbodor. And then I just uh, counter captured or Guzma the Garbodor into the active, making them basically useless because they couldn't even attach a float stone. Oh man, that's crazy. Also, I think that was a Zoroark matchup, so they couldn't even use trade because they shut off their own abilities. Oh, that that's just that's just unfair. And that is Wallstall. Alright, thank you very, very much, Jose, for showing sharing that with us here today. And for those of you guys out there that just like having decks like that, or that's, you want to do something really creative, especially if it literally only wants a single basic energy in the deck. Like, you don't see that often. Like, a deck with just one basic energy? Well, then this is the deck for you guys. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that subscribe button, like, and comment down below. And thank you again so, so much, Jose, for profiling this for us here today. And there's the announcements. <laughs> Alright, you guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you all next time.